And then you go to Mina, and there you do three things. You stone the Jamarat, you shave your head, you slaughter the sheep, and then you go for Tawaf and Ifada. And in Mina, another word for Mina is Muna. You actually, you'll see signs and if you go to Hajj that say Muna. And Muna means a desire. A desire. And the Hajjaj now, they are in Muna and they have this burning desire in their heart to go to the Bayt of Allah. Bayt al-Atiq. The house that is liberating. And they hope to be liberated from all their sins and their all their worldly attachments. And so they go and they they do the jamarat. And the jamarat is a powerful, powerful part of Hajj and, and how they've changed it now, it's one of the most peaceful parts of Hajj as well. For those of you who've gone in the last few years, you know what I'm talking about. We know what, why we do the jamarat, why we throw it. Because Ibrahim والسلام, was confronted by shaitan and he threw these seven pebbles. Now when we go to the, jam, the, the, the Jamarat al-Kubra, the biggest Jamara, and we throw these seven pebbles, we are doing what Ibrahim والسلام, did. But look at what we throw. We throw small pebbles, the size of a, of a chickpea. We don't throw big rocks. We don't need heavy ammunition or anything to defeat shaitan. It's a simple Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. A small rock. And by that, shaitan was defeated. By that, shaitan was defeated. And if you think at shaitan and the stranglehold he has upon us, how we constantly, day by day, insist upon sinning. And we reflect on this example of Hajj in which a small pebble a small pebble defeats shaitan. We wonder how can shaitan have a control over us? How can he control us? And Allah has even recorded in the Quran. In the Quran وَقَالَ الشَّيْطَانُ لَمَّا قُضِيَ الْأَمْرُ إِنَّ اللَّهَ وَعَدَكُمْ وَعْدَ الْحَقِّ وَوَعَدْتُكُمْ فَأَخْلَفْتُكُمْ وَمَا كَانَ لِي عَلَيْكُمْ مِنْ سُلْطَانٍ إِلَّا أَنْ دَعَوْتُكُمْ فَاسْتَجَبْتُمْ لِي فَلَا تَلُومُونِي وَلُومُوا أَنفُسَكُمْ Shaitan will say when the affair has been decided on the Day of Judgment. Allah Azza wa Jalla has promised you a promise. And I too promised you, but I deceived you. And I had no power over you. Except that I called and you answered. That's it. I called and you answered. So don't blame me. Blame yourselves. Don't blame me. Blame yourselves. Shaitan has no power over the believers unless we give him that authority. He is weak. And if you insist, on fighting him, Allah will make you successful. Those who they seek guidance, not just seek guidance, from that means that they're constantly they're working on it day by day. They're struggling. You might fall into sin. You might backbite, but you repent to Allah. You might backbite again, but you repent to Allah again. You are seeking the guidance of Allah. You're trying every day for them. فَزَادَهُمْ هُدَىٰ وَأَعْتَاهُمْ تَقْوَىٰهُمْ Allah will increase them a guidance and give them taqwa. And after you throw the seven jamarat, actually I remember one of the brothers when I went to Hajj a few years ago from California, he said, he, he said this and I quote, Man, that was easy. Shaitan is weak. That was the easiest part of Hajj. Shaitan is weak and he was right. Shaitan is weak. And then you, after you do that, you go and you, if you're able to, you slaughter a, a, an animal. Now the slaughtering is, is um, most, most of the time is done for people. But this is an important step that I want to reflect on. Because the slaughtering has a powerful, powerful example for our lives. Because Ibrahim والسلام, was commanded to slaughter Ismail. Ibrahim was an old man when he had his son Ismail. And he loved him dearly. Ismail held a special place in the heart of Ibrahim 
Ibrahim was old, his wife was old, yet he was blessed with Ismail. Now Allah Azza commanded him to slaughter Ismail. Ismail said, do as you were commanded. And so he put Ismail down. Now, imagine this, imagine those of you who are fathers. Imagine taking your child and being commanded to slaughter him. With a knife to his neck, literally slaughter him. That's a great test. And Allah says in the Quran that this was a great test. <laughs> now Ibrahim he put Ismail down. Now, when that happened, that wasn't enough to pass the test. It wasn't that he just simply put him down and then Allah sent a, a ram in his, in his place. No. He put him down, he took the knife. The Mufassirin say, and he actually put it to the neck of Ismail. And not only that, but he did the movement of slaughtering. He actually did the movement. And when he did that, Allah has really placed a barrier there. So the slaughter could not happen. And Allah says, فَلَمَّا أَسْلَمَا When they both submitted themselves to Allah. Now why is that important? Because Ibrahim والسلام, he was the khaleen of Allah. وَاتَّخَذَ اللَّهُ إِبْرَاهِيمَ خَلِيلًا And to be the khaleen of Allah, this, this rank of khullah, the highest level of mahabba that one can have of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you cannot have anything else in your heart. It is only Allah and that's it. And who are the khaleen of Allah? Ibrahim والسلام, and the Prophet وسلم, he said in authentic hadith that he is the khaleen of Allah. To reach that level, there can be nothing else in the heart. And so when Ibrahim, he did not slaughter his son, but what he did do at that moment is he slaughtered his nafs. He slaughtered it. Done with. He submitted to Allah. And that is the meaning of Islam. That we submit ourselves fully to Allah Azza wa Jal. To His commands. We may not understand some things. We may not understand why we have to leave work and come to Jum'ah. We may, understand, may not understand why do we have to wear hijab. But we submit ourselves to Allah. The bank alone, but a bank. We are here, Ya Allah, in this world to serve you, to serve you alone. And that is a powerful example. So when we do the slaughtering, we think of this. And then you go and you shave your head. And when you shave your head, hair is, is almost like a piece of arrogance that we have, right? We like to look good. We like to comb our hair and make it look nice. When we shave our heads, we are all the same now. Everybody wearing the same clothing all shaved, going to the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then you go to the house of Allah and you do tawaf and ifadah. And ifadah means a burst. Having this burst and you, you're going from muna to tawaf and ifadah, the bait of Allah. Bait Rabbi. And there you have these bursts of desires and, and of seeking the forgiveness of Allah. Seeking His acceptance. And the Prophet he told Umar al-Khattab at the, at the Hajj al-Aswad, here tears are shed profusely. And people begging for the mercy and forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And you perform the tawaf, making dua constantly, your tongue always in dhikr of Allah. Always in dhikr of Allah. And Allah says in Surah Al-Baqarah that, فَإِذَا قَضَيْتُمْ مَنَاسِكَكُمْ When you have completed all your manasik, all the rituals of hajj, فَذْكُرُ الله. Then again remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that's a reminder for us again, always to be constantly in remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, making dhikr of Allah. Remembering him. Because when you do that, then it keeps you away from haram. Because you're remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, al-Raqib, al-Sami, al-Alim, al-Basir. The ones who sees and hears and knows all things. And after tawaf and ifadah, hajj is almost done. You do the jamarat of two more days. And then the last thing is tawaf and wada'a.